everybody. Welcome to the Fired Up with CJ Show. Today we have Dr. Arthur Sierra McCauley, and he's talking about his newest book, America Reunited, a relational solution to bridging the political, social, personal chasm that's dividing our nation. So welcome, Dr. Sierra McCauley. Thank you, CJ. Good to see you again. So um, I want to there's I'll tell you about something that happened to me this morning, which actually um, I'm still I'm still processing and I'm not even sure what to think of. So I was walking down the street with my husband. We usually have a morning walk together and um, we had um, we had this woman who was just sitting at the bus stop. I didn't even I couldn't even hear her, um, but she said to my husband, um, why isn't why are you with that why why are you with that woman um why don't you stay with your own kind my husband's white Mm -hmm. and my husband just automatically like first of all i couldn't hear it so the the instant reaction it didn't inspire this instant reaction Mm -hmm. with me but my husband heard it and he was just outraged with this woman saying such a obnoxious thing. Mm -hmm. And I was just shocked. And um, he said, why don't I get you (laughs) his responses? I would like to get you on camera and saying this just because it sounds like you're okay with just accosting strangers on the street. And he was mad. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm sorry. And I said to her, I'm really sorry that you're feeling this much pain you know mm-hmm. love to you and I thought well is that just a cop-out like I, I you know so there's two different extremes of reactions I mean, my husband's reaction which was to be very mad at her um and then he continued to engage in I wouldn't describe as a dialogue but kind of a a, a, a meeting of wills where he's mm-hmm. like and she said, well, why don't you, he's like, what, what, what makes you think it's okay for you to be saying these things to utter strangers? And she's like, well, you know, why, why can't you be with a person your own kind? Is white not good enough for you? Clearly, you know, and he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so we went through, this, so I'm, I'm still in shock by that. I don't know if I'm in shock, but I'm just still mystified by the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I want, I was wondering if we could use the, some of the I, I, items that you have in your book as a way of discussing something that literally just happened to me and sadly sure. happened to me just like literally a couple hours ago. Well, it, it's a great example, CJ, of what's happening in our society today. I mean, first of all, I'm, I'm very sorry that you had to hear that, you and your husband. I, I'm mad too. He is reacting with aggression to meet aggression goes nowhere. You don't influence anyone. You know, you have to slow down and actually ask open-ended questions like, okay, he did ask, what makes you, what makes you think that way? I, I don't understand where you're coming from. You don't know me or my wife. Yeah. Where are, you, where are you coming from? What is what is it about white with white, or what, what is it about mixed races? What do you, what do you think? Yeah. You know, now you're on the streets. So you're not going to have a long term uh, discussion. Right. But if if we were trying to influence a person, that's what we'd be doing. What's happened in our, in our culture right now is the white supremacy movement is very prominent. Mm-hmm. We have more prejudice than we've ever had, ever, ever, ever. Rates of anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, uh, discrimination against women, sexism, racism, and discrimination discrimination against people of different sexual orientations are all at all-time highs, all-time highs, since in the last four to five years. So certain people, and particularly politicians, have given permission for people to talk that way. There was a time, I, I believe, in America where we didn't talk that way. And I don't think it's the majority of people. You know, right. I, I was correcting a woman who said to me today, she said, you know, almost everybody's talking. I said, you know, almost everybody isn't talking that way. My friends don't talk that way. My clients don't talk that way. Yeah. People I interact with in the stores don't talk that way. But there is a minority of people who are very angry people, very hateful people. And they've been, been given permission by leaders in mm, our country mm-hmm. to express it to others, take right, it out right. on others. Now, right. I can guarantee you that that woman 
it, I would guarantee you almost like 150% has nothing to do with race or color. It has something to do with her, her yeah. personality, her distorted view of people. And where did that come from? It probably came from early in her life to think that way. Mm -hmm. Who would be brazen enough even to say something like that? Right. Nine out of 10 people would not. Right. Even if they thought it, they wouldn't say it. Yeah. But she felt the, the permission to say it. That people who are angry and hateful have been given permission. Mm -hmm. You can do that now. You can go up to a stranger and say these things. And people do, more so than ever. Yeah. So, so I, because I asked my husband, I said, it didn't bother me. And I, I guess it's, it's offensive to both of us, right? It's offensive to me because I am like the non-white lesser version of lesser valued version. So I would be, if... And it and I was like, well, I, I don't feel that way about myself. So I didn't have it literally didn't have any reaction aside from just being mystified, like, wow, what is happening that she's just saying this like this slight to my husband and me. But it was really directed at my husband, like, why are you with yeah. that woman versus um someone who's of more value? And because I thought, well, I, listen, you're now of more value than me, then I don't know if it's just arrogance on my part or hubris, but I just, or denial, I, I'm not really sure what happened on my end. And then my husband, I said, so why did you go after this gal? And he said, you know, she's, people are used to just saying these things. So I think if I don't make a strong enough stance, then she'll feel like it's okay to continue yes, making this because yes. there's in Seattle yes. people here are generally very passive so she's probably said this comment you know she probably has quote unquote gotten away with saying mm -hmm. this comment to several people and my typical reaction which is like whatever just leave her alone um has been probably 90 percent of the people if she has been saying this over and over again mm -hmm. but my husband said but if you don't really say something and have her a sense of like that's not okay to say and you shouldn't mm -hmm. be saying those things. And what gives you the right to say those things, which was the kind of the, the stance that my husband was taking. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, how is she going to stop? Like, there's no reason for her to stop if, if you just passively accept things. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I understand the idea of not meeting anger with anger. Um, but I also don't know. I, I've been questioning like, well, maybe I should have stood up, but I, I didn't, it didn't feel authentic for me at the time to say like, what do you know, lady? You know, I just didn't, I, there've been plenty of times when I've gone that direction. In this case, I just didn't feel it. Yeah. So, I mean, what I understand, but it's, I understand it's not great to meet anger by, with anger, but what about the idea of if you don't say anything that the bullying continues? I fully agree with your husband. You have to say something. I always tell people, do not get into an interchange where there's screaming and yelling and slandering. But that doesn't mean you can't say something in the beginning. And if it goes south that way, then you de-invest. And I was right. only trying to ask a question. What makes you feel that someone of color is less than you are? What right. makes you, how did, how did you come to think that way? Yeah. You try to get people to give you the facts because as they explain, there aren't any. You know, people, people don't want to be seen as racist. People don't want to be seen as sexist. So when they start to explain how they determine that a person of color is less than a person who's white, mm -hmm. they get, it falls apart. Hmm. It, it literally falls apart because how do you substantiate that? But then how do you not get triggered? You know, so you see this thing and, and I mean, I wasn't triggered and I don't know why I wasn't triggered. Maybe I went, I don't, I, I was more just confused. Like what, what are you saying? Oh, whatever. You're crazy. was kind of like my attitude, like don't engage with crazy people. That's, and I don't even know if that's the right, I, I've been questioning, is that the right stance? I'm not sure. <laughs> I think we need to speak. I think we need to address hateful comments and we try to do it reasonably, civilly. But mm -hmm. if it turns into a shouting match, then, then it's no, there's no point in talking. That's what I mean with aggression matches mm -hmm. aggression. I see. What happens is we release the stress home of cortisol and our, our empathic range goes from out here to in here. Right. And then we just get in this very black and white way of thinking. 
Right. I'm right. You're right. You're, I'm, you're wrong. I'm right. And it goes nowhere. You don't influence anyone. When you yeah. sit people down, like, and I, I've been doing communication and leadership groups for years, and we talk about prejudice. We talk about the, and I talk about it obviously in the book about people who, for instance, a black woman, a black Brazilian woman came into the group and she expected white people to be, we have Asian, I have Asian people, but I did not have other black people. And, and she expected people to be very prejudiced. Now she learned from her own prejudice mm -hmm. that these people in this particular group were not like that. They weren't judging her by her color. They were judging her by her behavior. Mm -hmm. And they had to say that to her. And they said, you know, you came in so angry and assuming that we're all bigots and racists and you accused us without even knowing us. That, mm -hmm. that was offensive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was a little bit of a turn rather than, you know, uh, a white person accusing a black person. It was a black person accusing white people. And mm -hmm. what I try to do in those groups is slow it down slow down is the key phrase with empathy so we can enter the world of other people and see what the truth is it's just mm. like democrats and republicans in this country they, they start to hate each other mm -hmm. you know hate each other for what when you look at the facts of what they believe in they're not very far apart yeah so you know, <laughs> there there are about you know six percent are in the far right eight percent are in the uh, the far left and the rest of people are, are in this exhausted majority you know, they're, they're just tired of it. They're tired of the fighting. Mm -hmm. And Republicans and Democrats really don't hate each other as much as it's told in the media. It's, it's a distortion. Okay, so I want to go with a couple of examples. That I've heard. I'll, I want to talk about political um, things that I've seen. Um, and then I want to relate it to back to the personal and then the whole thing with vaccination, which which has caused this huge divide. So mm -hmm. for political during, you know, the um, whole existence of Trump and I assume now Biden, there's just so many people that are outraged with, you know, uh, um, Biden and Trump. And so the question is, you know, when when you actually have two people to a brother and a sister, a, a father and a daughter, you know, it's getting to a point where people are like, we just can't talk about it. You know, just mm -hmm. we get together for Thanksgiving and this is an area we just don't even talk about. So I'll use a personal example. My mom um, is very close with my aunt and she's in Michigan and she's very much a red hat Trump kind of person. And so my mom, comes and espouses certain kinds of Trump in Trump kind of ideology. And it just, it would make my husband crazy if she continued. And I usually I just say, mom, this is not going to go anywhere productive. I think we just need to stop, stop mm -hmm. talking about this. And so even if, and if, if we try to challenge her and go down your path of like, why do you think that? and kind of force her to go down the path of understanding it, she would get more with her um, personality would get even more defensive and come up with all sorts of um, crazy scenarios that would sound more mm -hmm. and more crazy, just knowing mm -hmm. my mother. So, you know, she has these perceptions. Um, they're built off of talking to her sister. They're built off of Michigan. Um, and frankly, I, I am equally biased because I'm here in the Pacific Northwest where almost like there's, I think it's like 98% Democrat in the Seattle area that we're located. So I'm also admittedly 98% brainwashed as well. I get that. So when you're in these political controversies with your family mm -hmm. and clearly relationships matter the most for you, then what, what, what's the best way to approach these kinds of conflicts? Well, the way I try to approach it, and, and one of my closest friends is a Republican and voted for Trump, and I, I, we'll go into these discussions and, and with other friends too. And of course, they'll say, "Well, I voted for him because of what he did." You know, look at the taxes, look at this. And my answer to that is, I'm an independent. I have voted for Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. We have a Republican governor in Massachusetts who I like very much. He's opposed Trump on virtually everything, mm -hmm. but he's a Republican, but he makes sense. So I, I sort of go by the way people think and, and how they perceive rather than so much the party. Mm -hmm. What I say in the end is 
here's what has been true historically. If you have a leader of a nation, if you have a leader of a company, if you have a leader of an educational institution who is a psychopath, who has no conscience, who is sadistic, and always blames other people for everything that is done to him or any kind of criticism, that that person wants to hurt other people. Statism is the, the capacity to hurt other people and enjoy it. There are people like that. I don't care what political party you're from or what policies you have. If you have that personality, you will destroy a nation. That has been true historically. And my friend, who we've had, the, if finally, I said to him, let's talk personality. I'm, I, you know more about politics than I do. I don't consider myself politically astute, but I've been a clinical psychologist in practice for 40 years. Do you think I know how to assess personalities? He goes, of course you do. I said, okay, tell me about his personality. Well, he's crazy. I know he's crazy. I said, so you want a crazy person to be the model for your kids and your grandkids and, your, and, and for our nation? You think he's crazy, but you would vote for him because you're going to pay less taxes? Well, yeah. now that you put it that way, I don't... A lot of people not defending personality, they're defending policy. Mm -hmm. And then when you even get into the policy, it's not clear. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have any more money in my pocket in those four years, so I don't, I don't know what, what anyone else was doing, but... <laughs> I actually paid more taxes and I make about the same amount of money every year. So I don't know what happened. The point is, we shouldn't always be focused on party. We're too identified with party right now. Mm -hmm. You know, in 1965, 3% of Democrats and 4% of Republicans objected if their adult children would marry somebody of the opposite political party. <laughs> Three and 4%. You know what it is today? 85%. Wow. wow. 85%. 85% of the time, parents were making judgments that I don't want you to marry that Republican or that Democrat because they're in the opposite political party. That wow. says something. <laughs> that's, I'm, that's shocking, actually. That shocks well, me. It's really kind of crazy, isn't it? That, that is we're, kind of we're, crazy. We're that, I, I mean, the, what is it like the nation we were born in? I mean, it, 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 it becomes too much. We're too identified with it. And we're not looking at a more centrist position of what makes sense. When you, you know, this concept of deliberate polling, when you bring parties together, like they've done it with climate change, mm -hmm. you bring 10 people together, 10 people who don't believe in climate change, 10 people who do, and you bring in five scientists, five of the, of the nation's experts, and they give them papers to read and you spend, and they give, and they do lectures and they spend two or three days together. You know, 70% of the people change their minds at the end of those two days. Interesting. Because, because they're slowing it down and they're saying, look, I don't know which side you're on, but here's the facts. Mm -hmm. is, the, is the story that the ice is melting true? Yes. Is, you know, it, you know, so they go over it and they prove it, they show it scientifically, mm -hmm. and it's hard to deny that. Mm -hmm. what we're hearing is this hateful rhetoric of going back and forth, people yelling and angry and nothing gets understood. Mm -hmm. So if you're in, so going back to the scenario where a lot of people face politics with friends that I literally have said, had friends who said, oh, I don't, I've unfollowed him because the, you know, the amount of political rhetoric, was, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I just unfriended him on Facebook. And I thought, wow, like I, I, I don't think I'd ever unfriend a person on Facebook unless they said something specifically offensive to me personally about me. Like it would be really, it would be very hard, <laughs> but I mean, this is happening nonetheless, where, you know, you, you luckily had a friend that you could actually have this conversation with, but let's say this was your brother or sister or father or mother or granddaughter that you're having these conversations with, um, you know, where there's a deep relation where if you don't agree, it's like, it's, you're going to have to see them Christmas after Christmas. I mean, how would you deal with those kinds of things? I would. When it comes up, 
I would try to understand how you come to think the way you do. Mm-hmm. How, do how do you come to perceive the way you do? Because, mm-hmm. you know, we have this confirmation bias. We, we tend to perceive and see things that we want to see. We mm-hmm. read in it. We hear a few words and we make decisions. That's what it's confirming our bias. Mm. I try to move people away from the bias, like, no, really. And in showing a real curiosity about how, how do you come to think that way? Mm-hmm. You know, how do you come to perceive that way? Well, you know, but well, how did you know that? Well, my cousin, Frank, he reads a lot about politics. He lives in New Jersey. And I said, so your cousin, Frank, told you, yeah, he was, he got it on Twitter. Something was on Twitter. And they said that Biden is blah, blah, blah. I said, so your cousin Frank saw something on Twitter, which you don't know the source of. You don't even know if it was an article, but Frank told you that Joe Biden believes in blah, blah, blah. And now you do. Well, now you're making me sound silly. I'm not trying to make you sound silly. I'm just trying to understand. Where did you get the information? Mm. Well, I told you my cousin Frank reads a lot. I said, I'm not saying he doesn't read a lot. But you have to be the authority of what you perceive, not your cousin Frank. Where did he get it? What was the source? Was it on MSNBC, Newsmax, Fox News, CNN? Where where was it? And people have to understand today, nighttime news stations are entertainment. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily facts. Fox News was sued for distortion of facts. And in a court of law, they were found innocent because Rupert Merkel said, it's not a news show, it's an entertainment show. So in yeah. an entertainment show, you can say all kinds. Well, the people who are listening don't know it's an entertainment show. They yeah, and they it's hear it's, it's, a, it's an echo chamber. You know, I went during the um, elections, I called up a gentleman in um, Texas and I, I, I said, well, I'm calling to, you know, talk. he was of Hispanic descent. He was, I think maybe first generation um, his, like from his parents, his grandparents immigrated from Mexico. And he said, this is a sore subject in my house because all my family wants me to vote Democrat. And I just can't, I just can't do it. And um, I said, well, why? And he said, well, you know, well, you know, Joe Biden's position on fracking is to stop all fracking. And I just cannot, like, that's basically the only thing that has taken my house, my, my grandmother and my parents and me from a place of, of having no money to actually buying a house now. So I can actually see that this industry has actually moved, you know, us to a different place. And I was like, okay, so you believe, and he's like, and Joe Biden is going to take all of that away. And I said, oh, okay. And then what else? And so he had these, a set of um, stories that he'd been hearing. And I realized that these are stories that he's heard from being on, you know, being in the solar panel place that he was in. Uh, Like he was working on solar panels, his grandparents were working in fracking and Mm -hmm. so he was like I said so solar panels that's something actually that Joe Biden is like proposing he's like I know I know but like I'm just looking at my bottom line and I can see and I said well okay and I then actually I pulled up a bunch of different research I did research on the internet to find places that he would find as trusted resources you know Fox News U.S. news report, like nothing like the New York Times or anything that's like kind of clearly they would consider it as fake news. So I try to take ones that were considered like real news in his mind and and uh, share it with him. And I never heard back from him, but it was very it was very interesting because he I, I and I assumed like, well, why is this happening? Well, when I listened to the rhetoric that was given in the South in Texas, it was just he was hearing things that were, you know, validly things that he was hearing, no matter where he turned on the news, his coworkers, his, you know, he would hear these same messages to the point that he believed yeah. that they were true. So, I mean, I had a lot of compassion at that point, Mike, well, what, well, what do you expect the guy to do? He's like working his tail off. He's not going to be going through and doing extensive research on the internet. Like I did to find out whether these things are true or not. And like literally read what Biden said with respect to these positions. I mean, Mm -hmm. it took me a couple hours to gather all the research and, you know, the guy doesn't have the time to do that. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's, 
I understand what you're saying, but then most people don't want to go through put in the time to do the research. Okay, so then don't make the judgment then. If you're not going to do that, then then be very careful. Don't generalize, don't demonize, and don't make assumptions. Yeah. Just just assume. Like as I said, I do not consider myself to be politically astute. I haven't read every law that's been passed and I don't follow congressional hearings like some people do. Some of my colleagues or friends. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I don't know. I don't have the answer. Yeah. I don't know is a better answer than concluded. Yeah, but then from his perspective, yeah, that's what he's hearing from Fox News when he listens to it. That's what he hears from his coworkers. That's where he hears from, you know, maybe the bar where he goes and hangs out and talks to people at the bar. Like, it seems like the truth because he's hearing it. I'm just, yes. I, I don't know. I'm just yes. making up a story, but I, I was trying to like, how does this, how did this occur? I was just very curious, like, how has this occurred? And I thought, well, well, you know, the guy's really busy. <laughs> he has two kids, you know, he doesn't, you know, yeah, he's got yeah. a lot going on. So I don't think he was thinking that he had a confirmation bias, um, but he did. Repetition. I think you're highlighting repetition. Yeah. Repetition all over. makes you feel like it's true. Yeah. So. Hear it over and over again. And it's sort of like, you know, it, it must be true. But that's not that's that's not accurate. I know, you know but how do you get how do you convince someone who's in that state, literally in that state, um, in that mental state, to think otherwise? It's a very difficult thing if someone has bought bought a home supporting their family in a particular industry that that's that's going to be extinct. For instance, we're going to bring coal back. Everyone, every, every, every person in the Midwest who's dealt with coal knew that's not going to happen. Gas is far more efficient, cleaner. It's not going to happen. We're not going to bring coal mining back. Now, a lot of those coal miners believed it. Why did they believe it? Because they kept hearing. It. Mm. Has it happened? It's five years later. Has it happened? No. No. We have to realize that people say things in order to get votes, get elected, and to keep their income. Why is it in Congress that we don't have people who cross the aisle like the old days, mm -hmm. like a John McCain or a Tip O'Neill? Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan were close friends. Mm. Tip O'Neill was the first one at Ronald Reagan's bedside when he was shot and he said, I love you, Mr. President. Mm. And Nancy Reagan said, she used to have to come downstairs and tell him to go to bed because they'd be staying up two o'clock in the morning arguing theory about government. Mm -hmm. But they loved each other. Why? Because she said they believed in what they were saying. It wasn't just for show. Mm. John McCain, not that I agree with everything that John McCain ever did, but he was a patriot. Mm -hmm. okay? But he's being insulted. Even last week he was insulted, even though he's in the grave. Mm. He's the nasty person, blah, blah, blah. This is a person who stayed in a constant in a camp being tortured an extra four years because he didn't want to leave his people, but he could have left. Mm. So that doesn't exist. We need to elect people who cross the aisle. Who crosses the aisle today? Nobody. Mm -hmm. If you're a Republican, you know how they're going to vote. If you're a Democrat, you know how they're going to vote. Yeah. Is there anyone that would cross the aisle who would actually go against their group, their clan? and say, this is not good for the country, that's what we're missing. So, so let me go back to the Thanksgiving thing, because I really am curious about that. So would you suggest that, all right, I'm with my mom. I completely disagree with her. I know, given her personality, she's not going to really change her mind. This is going to escalate into an argument. Do you just say, like, let's talk about the weather? I mean, <laughs> or do you do you approach it? Because really what you're saying is that until you approach ignorance with facts and question it, then the person's just going to continue. It's going back to the thing that, that I'm repeating about my husband and I, like, do you just let ignorance reign or do you push the person to go like, okay, yeah, well, what makes you, I just want you to understand why do you think blah, 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 or what is it about so-and-so? What is it about the, 
this kiss, you know, the color of my, my wife's skin that makes you think that she's less than, or that you're greater than, you know, I'm, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Um, is it better to face it face on or, or are you being somewhat of a coward if you're not? Um, I don't know. Those are the questions. I, I understand start, if you're going to face it, don't get angry about it. You start with an inquiry with open-ended questions and that you truly have to be generally curious. I'm really curious how you come to think the way you do. I, I don't understand. Yeah. Can you explain to me how you came to think X. Yeah. Now, maybe, maybe you just get mad at me. Maybe you just get, and you yell at me and you insult me. Then I would de-invest and I'd say, you know, I don't talk to people when they yell at me. And, you know, you're, you're being slanderous now and it's not, it's not going to go anywhere. I'm not going to participate. If you want to have a civil discussion, I'm still very interested in knowing. I have a cousin who is very black and white like that. And we've been over, and, and I said to her, and she said, well, why don't you talk to me about politics? I said, because you're too hard to talk to. I said, <laughs> I've tried, but you yell, you get, you get incensed. And then you utter a lot of things that I don't believe are true. Well, you don't know. I said, no, the four of the five things that you said the last time we had dinner, I know are not true. You will never convince me that they are. I have done the research. I can tell you where it's from. Oh, you think you know everything. No, I don't think I know everything, but do you wanna know how I know that four of those points that you made are not true? I don't need to, I don't need your opinion. Okay, so I said, okay, so we're done. I still love you, but we're done. But it's disappointing that we can't have a discussion based on the truth. Mm, I like and that. I okay. and, I walked, and I walked away and she was upset. But the next time we meet, I can guarantee you, because I know her, she won't let it go. She'll let, <laughs> oh, well, what are those facts? Are you going to get angry if I tell you what they are? And it's not my opinion. These are the opinions of scientists, and I can show you where they come from. And it's a collective group of scientists, not one man in Texas. It's a whole group of people that have come <laughs> to this conclusion based on credible, lasting research. Oh, do we have to get into all of that tonight? No, we don't have to. Because <laughs> she doesn't want to go there. <laughs> but eventually, but I am speaking. I am telling her that I don't believe what she said. And I'm not going to take part in an angry interchange where she's insulting me. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I oh, think that think that's, that's my answer. It's like, I'm, I, get, I, I don't agree with you. I want to understand you. And if, if it gets angry, it's an inner, I don't want to be part of that because it's yeah, not productive. Because I always say, reason goes out the window when people get angry. Right. You start, you start generalizing, making assumptions, and then nothing changes. Mm. So, mm. okay, if you want to do that, I don't want to do that. I'll talk to you if you want to have a reasonable discussion. But once yeah. you start raising your voice and start calling me names, I'm done. I don't do that. Because I know it goes nowhere. Okay, I'll tell you one thing that triggers me. And I just, I, this is the one thing I just really, so I would like you to change my opinion. I, and, and I would say that I, I, when people talk about the vaccinations and they're not getting vaccinated, it, there's like something in my head that goes off and I just go crazy. Like, it's like, what do you mean? You know, just like, <laughs> I'm not being reasonable, but I can tell you that that's what happened. So if you find yourself, you know, fitting into that profile of someone like you want to be reasonable, but you already know that like literally when I hear the news reports and I heard the reports yesterday where Anthony Fauci was like, we'll have to put the mask on because indoors, because there are certain, certain states that actually, you know, have you know, the Delta variant is running wild. And I, and I was like, oh, da, da, you know, I just went into a craze. <laughs> like, why can't you just get vaccinated? And, 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 and he was saying, you know, it, it, for those states, if, if we had, you know, we could have herd immunity if everyone gets vaccinated. So if we don't want this Delta variant to go ramp rampant, please just get vaccinated. That was this kind of like rational mm -hmm. statement imploring people to get, but it just set me off. Like in my head, I just, my head, whole head went into like a tirade. 
So when you see yourself being intolerant, what is the best thing to do in that case? Slow down and, and, and try to understand where you're coming from. You know, why am I so intolerant? What's my goal? Do I want to influence that person? Am I going to influence that person by being intolerant? No, you're not. You're only going to cause more resistance. So what is the way? I mean, one of the, one of the things that's happened is Anthony Fauci has been dehumanized. They call it, they call it on certain radio and TV stations, the Fauci virus. Oh my God! And, and he fought Anthony, uh, Tony, he went to China and, and he was in, involved with the Wuhan scientists. No, he never went to China. That's not true. <laughs> so okay. you have to start there because they see him, he's the vaccine person. Yeah, it's his vaccine. Him and Bill Gates and Obama are making millions, multi-millions on it. That's not true. The Obamas and Bill Gates and Anthony Fauci have no investment in Pfizer or Moderna or Johnson & Johnson. But, mm. oh my God, no, no, that's not true. No, that is true. That is true. But we have all of that to deal with. So it's trying to correct the distortion. Not mm. just saying, get it. We could be good if you all get it. Because there are people who actually think they're going to die if they get it. There, mm. there are women who think it, it causes infertility. Mm. And the other thing that it's doing, I was, I was in the hospital yesterday and I was talking to physicians and nurses in Boston and they're getting resentful because they're all vaccinated and they got to take care of me and you who are not vaccinated mm -hmm. because we won't and we're on ventilators. So now they have all these COVID patients that they have to take care of and risk their lives because we refuse to get vaccinated. So it's causing resentment and that oh. Oh, interesting. Healthcare worker. I totally makes sense to me. I would be resentful too. You know, why do I have to take care of you when I got kids at home and you won't get vaccinated and we got to put you on a ventilator? And then people come out and say, oh, well, I should have got the vaccine. But why? How does it come about that you didn't want it? Yeah. Because I heard something that scared me. Hmm. There were Republican senators being interviewed yesterday on national TV who said, don't get the vaccine. Okay, I didn't so, hear that. <laughs> so if you're following that person, um, what do you do? And then they come up with crazy ideas like, well, again, if we wanna live healthy, balanced lives, and if we wanna do something about this divide in our country, we have to find out what the truth is. You yes, can't just yes. rely on ex-politician. Politicians are talking like they're medical doctors now. If they know, you know, and they start, they don't, they're not physicians. They're not scientists. They're politicians. Yeah. They, yeah, so, I'm, so it's, what I'm hearing as a general rule is being patient. Being patient with be people because you don't really know what their perceptions are based off of, what their preconceptions and perceptions are based off of and until you get a sense of that it's hard to like you know you it's almost as if you just you know treat them like an innocent child you know, or something <laughs> like not in a demeaning way but like in someone who just no, doesn't not in know a demeaning way but it's it's like your example with fracking look if you live in alabama which has very low percentage of vaccinations people, mm -hmm. people being vaccinated and you're hearing on radio every day that it causes infertility, it causes senility, it's a cause of Alzheimer's, I don't know if you knew that, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and you hear it over and over, and your fellow workers are saying it too. You go home and you say, there's no way I'm getting it. And you like a particular senator who has to be saying, happens to be saying, don't get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. It's like a slam dunk. But do you have any knowledge, really? No because you're listening to radio hosts or you're listening to TV personalities to tell you about science. Mm. When, when you have to realize in our world, people say things for greed and money. If I can say outlandish things on TV at night and I get 6 million people to follow me every night, that individual is gonna continue to say those things. You realize there's people that have successful TV shows just because every night people think they're entertaining because, because they say crazy things. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But a lot of these people believe what they hear. It's about greed and money. It's about advertising. It's about people who are supporting that network. The ratings come in. If these people weren't getting followers by saying outlandish things, they'd be off the air. Mm -hmm. That's not where you should be getting your information. Right. I get it. So any thought, any final words um, in, in how we can help bridge the divide? I mean, we've talked about a lot of it. I guess in summary, I would say slow things down, get curious, ask the questions. And if it escalates, just you don't have to go there because when it does escalate, you're not going to go anywhere productive. That's what I would say is the main points. What am I missing? What else would you say? Well, just to just to also realize that people in the opposite political party, if you are of one party, they're, they don't hate you as much as you might imagine. You're listening to a lot of a media stuff that is stirred up for attention and, and to gain audiences. Democrats and Republicans are not that far apart. In the old Republican Party, it was, a, it, you know, one balanced the other. We'd have a Democratic president for four years, then we might have a Republican. Republicans are more conservative, Democrats are more liberal. We balanced each other out and it was okay. Now it's become extreme. Mm -hmm. We have the far right and the far left, and both are distortion. Mm -hmm. They're too extreme. Yep. I miss those days of Bob Dole when it was Bob. <laughs> it's like those days when I was like, I remember when I was younger, I was like, what is the difference between these candidates? There's heart, like whatever. It doesn't even matter because these two candidates are so similar. Nowadays, it's like uh, in such a big difference with the candidates. It's really- Because if you and I were running against each other, I would be told by my handlers, as soon as you start to talk, I want to attack you. Right. Rather than me trying to find the common ground with you. Yeah. Rather yeah. than me saying, you know, CJ actually had a good point there. That was an interesting point. Like civil people do. Yeah. No, my my objective would be to attack you and your handlers would be say, you can't let him do that. You gotta attack him. Yeah. That's where we've come to. It's fruitless. Yeah. yeah. It's it's increasing depression. Look, suicide rates, depression, alcoholism. Opiate addiction are at an all-time high also. Why? Because we're in a society that is not thriving. America has a cancer. Mm. You know, we have a cancer in our society. This way of thinking is destroying us. Yeah. I have clients from other countries who come here and say, you know, I, all my life I wanted to come to America and study and work and America was everything, you know, and it's horrible here. Mm. You know, they want to go back home. Oh, that's sad. That makes me really sad. Because the America they thought, when they hear all of this on TV and radio, it's not what they want. Mm. They could get back, get that back home where they came yeah, from. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I've had people say, "Look, I could have, I could have. We have this in my country. I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was here." Right. You want to you want to undo a, an election? You lose an election, but you can just overthrow it. That's I came from a communist government. That's the right. way they do it. You were going to do that here too. Yeah, <laughs> there's no escaping insanity yeah. anymore. Uh, all right, so we've been talking to Dr. Arthur Sir McCauley about his book, The American America Reunited: A Relational Solution to Bridging the Political social, personal chasm, dividing our nation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, CJ. I'm going to clap.